Class parties in kindergarten can be stressful. I want to share with you some tips on how to have a Valentine celebration in your class, but make it stress-free. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I am Michelle Griffo and I am so glad you're here. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel below by clicking that red rectangle and then every time you hop on YouTube, you'll be notified of my newest video. Okay, I wanna start with a million disclaimers because every school is different, every class is different, every type of celebration is different. So I want you to take this video with a grain of salt and look for ways you can modify and change some of my tips to meet your needs. There are different types of school settings. I've worked in both. I've worked in a situation where there are sign-up sheets and wish lists and parent volunteers. I've also worked on the other end of the spectrum where there aren't any of those and I'm kind of operating all by myself. So I'm going to kind of share ideas in the middle of the road as if you do have a couple hands to help you and you can ask the parents to bring some things. And at the end, I'm going to share just a simple idea if um, you're doing it all by yourself. My first tip is when you are celebrating Valentine's Day or any type of special holiday, you want to keep it short. It doesn't have to be this giant Pinterest experience. And you want to also have academic tie-ins, so you're still teaching that day. It just has a Valentine's theme. My second tip, if you're having a class party, you want to have it right before a break or dismissal. So you want to have your Valentine's Day party right before recess, right before lunch, or right before the end of the day. That way you can have your celebration and then there is a clear cutoff time and you send the kids out the door that, and then you can be cleaning and organizing and you're not having to try to regroup them after you had this really fun experience. Instead, they're either going outside to play or they're going home. Three, this is really important to me and maybe it's because I'm anal, maybe you'll resonate and say, yes, that's how I do it too. But you really wanna let your kids know what's gonna happen throughout the day and not have any surprises. That way you can set the expectations of how you want them to behave. So an example would be, I'm not gonna have all of a sudden a surprise experience where they're decorating heart cookies or say, um, oh, you get a surprise cupcake or whatever. I like to let them know exactly what's happening in the schedule and then we'll talk about how I expect you to behave and um, act when we're decorating cookies. We're not licking knives or throwing sprinkles. We just walk through it. They're still gonna be just as excited when it happens, but that way you don't have parents in the room and the kids are acting crazy all of a sudden because you haven't talked to them about how to behave before they're in the heat of the excitement. So I like to set my expectations and the schedule at the beginning of the day so they know what to expect. Passing out Valentine's cards. You guys, this is so fun and so special for them, but I do have a couple tips of what I've learned along the way that have made it more organized and less chaotic. Also, I really want you to leave a comment down below if there's a different way you do cards because I would like to learn and hear what you guys do and also other people can see how you do it and maybe get even better ideas. So one thing is in kindergarten, I tell the parents how many kids are in the class and they go home and they write their own name on 25 cards or whatever. So I would go home, if I'm the student, I write Michelle, from Michelle, from Michelle. You don't say who it's to. That way, when the students come in and it's time to drop off the cards, they pick up any card, drop it in a bag. Any card, drop it in a bag. They're not trying to read the student's name or try to figure out who it can go to. We kind of want this process to go fast, but we want it to be fun. And taking out the name on who it's to will eliminate eight hours of Valentine's party. Another thing is you really wanna make sure that the bags or the box that they are collecting Valentine's in, two things. It's big enough and it can stand up on its own. So if you're gonna use a Target plastic bag that can just fold and flop on the floor, it's gonna be hard to stick things in it. If it's like a giant, grocery paper bag and you have the kids decorate it. You can even sometimes go to the grocery store and say, hey, um, do you want to donate any bags? We're going to decorate them. And then the parents can later use them for groceries. You have this whole recycling lesson in, in there. It would be awesome. But you, some, some students will bring like a goodie bag and you had to make this cute little, you know, 
tissue box and things don't fit in and now you have all these boxes that are overflowing and how do you send them home? So you really wanna make sure they're collecting in something that is big enough to fit all the goodies and it can stand up on its own. Then what I do is I have the kids sit in a circle and everyone has their bag in front of them and they have their own Valentines that are gonna pass out. And what we do is we just take turns. I have like five kids go at, a, go at once, they have their bag of Valentines and they just drop one in every person's bag around the circle and then they sit down. And then the next five kids go and the next group of kids go. That way it's organized. The kids are fine sitting there and I tell them you can look at uh, you know, the little Valentines, please don't open and eat and candy, just keep it in your bag. Then after we've all passed out our Valentines, I staple the top of the bag and we either put it in their cubby, their backpack, and it can go home. That way things aren't falling out, they're not digging throughout the rest of the day. We passed out the cards, we're done, we can move on, everything's secure. All right, my next tip is to set up the day in center activities. Now I do have some resources to share with you. Anything I can, I'm gonna link in the description box down below so you can go find them either in my Teachers Pay Teachers store or on Amazon or wherever they're from. That way you can look them up later if you're interested. But what I try to do is I try to have center activities that kind of cover language arts, um, like reading and writing, math, maybe a STEM activity, sensory bin, something like that, and have the kids rotate through stations throughout the day. This can be done um, in a like condensed version for an actual class party where you would have parents set up at stations or you would just work it into your normal station activity, however you wanna do it. One thing, again, you wanna preview with the students what they're gonna do at each station before they get there and you have parent volunteers and it's confusing. So I'm gonna show you some ideas I have. There are some great books that you can read about Valentine's Day. This can either be done whole group or you have a parent read at the small group, whatever, however you wanna organize it. But there's this book, The Biggest Valentine Ever, this one's really cute, I love you so. There was an old lady who swallowed a rose. This one's precious, How Do I Love Thee? It's off of a poem. And my personal cutie favorite, Love Monster. This book is adorable. I also have a little flip book that is in my Teacher's Pay Teacher store. And what I would do is I would read this whole group either earlier in the day or a previous day. And then at the center activity, what they do is you'd have this pre-assembled or you can have them organize it and then help staple it, is all they're doing is counting the hearts and writing the number. It's a little book that they can go then and practice reading over and over for repetition and fluency. I do have another example of a lo another little flip book and this one is counting chocolates. So what they would do is they could color this, but you have them count the pieces, write the number, and it's practicing the teens. So that's awesome. Um, and the whole goal with these little books are you're practicing counting, but you're also practicing repetitive sentences so they can feel confident in their reading as they're le learning new words. Okay, another idea. I tried to find little heart marshmallows, and these are the only ones I could find to show you, but... You can look for STEM challenges on Pinterest using marshmallows and toothpicks. And this is really fun because what they do is they can either work independently or together and they are using marshmallows. They can be regular marshmallows, they don't have to be hearts. Um, and they are using toothpicks to build a, a tall tower. And there's lots of variations of this. One thing I do like to do is I have a bunch of um, marshmallows that they use and they're touching and they're building with and then I'll have like at the end you get to eat two untouched clean marshmallows. So that's an idea to have it as a center. Another idea you can do and you could do this whole group or small group is decorating cookies. I just like to give each kid maybe one or two. Honestly I just stick with one and have them eat it there versus trying to send cookies home is just a whole ordeal in itself. What you do is you give each kid a plate you put globs of frosting on the plate and sprinkles on the plate. You give them a popsicle stick and you say, decorate your cookie, eat it when you're done. This way you're eliminating knives and they're not scooping frosting out of a container. It's all contained to their one plate. They eat it, if they don't want it, they can throw it away and it's kind of done. Another activity I would do at a center is sensory bins. So what this is, is this is just a little tub of fun things to touch and play with, and inside there are activity cards. 
So you can really modify and change things up depending on where your students are at. You give them a response sheet. So for this one, they are doing a number hunt where what they would do is they you would tell them you are gonna hunt only for the pink cards. You count how many little hearts there are and you have to draw them and write the number. Then there's another activity. Let me grab it. You can do the same thing with letters. So you would have the students find the dark purple letters, you grab a card and you write it down and you also say the sound. Here's a, another example of what you would do. The students are practicing the beginning sounds. So they would pull a purple card, find top, do the first sound, t -t -t, and color the T. If you want it a little bit more difficult, there actually is a version where they are reading the CVC words. So they would pick the word pot, p -ot, and then they would color it, find it on the sheet. So this is a fun activity. I would have three of these tubs out for like, I like to do two kids to a tub, and you can completely change up what each student is doing based on their level, uh, depending on what paper you give them, and then what color card you assign them. So it's really great for differentiation. And my tip for those of you that don't have parent volunteers and can't have a wish list or donations sent to your class, you guys take the pressure off. Just have one activity you do that day that's super fun and extra special. You could pass out Valentine's. If that's not an option, you can have them make a card and write, write a um, very thoughtful and caring note and draw a picture home. Um, you could decorate a cookie. You could just do a craft. You could also lead up to Valentine's Day by doing dis different Valentine's activities. It doesn't have to be a whole stressful day that's really expensive or anything like that. So just take the pressure off and do whatever seems doable for you. Now I have a question. I want to know what else you guys do in your class to celebrate Valentine's Day. Leave a comment down below so everyone else can see your ideas and we can grow together. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking that button down below and also give it this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.